You good? Good evening, my sisters and brothers. Uh, we welcome you to this, our celebration uh, today. Uh, and we pray God's richest blessings upon you. This is the Feast of the Tabernacle. Uh, we've done the Feast of Trumpet, the day of 10 days of awe, awe, and the day of atonement. And so now this is the final feast, uh, the final fall feast. It's not the final feast, but it's the final fall, fall feast. So uh, we pray that uh, uh, the teachings tonight and what we do and say here tonight would be a blessing to each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we, we're doing this to, 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 uh, to help us understand what, it, what God expects of us and what he's commanded us to do. We are his chosen people and we just uh, uh, pray God's blessing upon you, okay? Okay, well, we're going to share the screen, and so we're going to have a teaching. Since we've never done this before, we're going to just teach on the on the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. So, uh, let's get the screen out, and uh, let's start the slideshow from the beginning. All right. Okay. All right. The Feast of Tabernacles is also called the Feast uh, uh, Sukkot. Sukkot means tents. And uh, it's also called the Feast of Ingathering. There's, there's three different names or terms for it. But uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is kind of pointing to when, when uh, uh, Yeshua will come back and dwell with us for eternity when he returns. So let's just so let's just go for the opening prayer. I will I will say the opening prayer. Uh, pray the opening prayer. Wonderful Father, we thank you for these appointed times, these Mo Moadim. We thank you that you have called your people for a special time to meet with you. And Father, we we don't want to miss it. We we are. Uh, we are just getting into this. Our eyes have just been open, and we want to be obedient in everything that you call that you have instructed us and commanded us to do. And yes, we know yes. that this is uh, this uh, moed or this uh, appointed time is is a command from you that we should come to you. And uh, all the for all of these feasts and appointed times. So we thank you that you will meet us here. Uh, Father, we may not be doing it all right because this is our first time, but we just ask that you will pour out your spirit upon us, that you will pour out your spirit upon all who will listen in and all who will celebrate during this next eight days. We thank you. We thank you for your son, Yeshua. We thank you for salvation through his blood. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who empowers us, who empowers us to, to uh, obey your commands yes. and keep your laws and statutes. Yes. We thank you, uh, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Now we ask that you would speak to our hearts, open up our minds to understand what the, what the things that you have commanded our forefathers to do. Open up our ears to hear and open up our eyes to see and our hearts to receive in the mighty and holy name of Yahshua HaMashiach, your son and high priest, amen, amen. 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 And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. And on the first day shall be a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. 
It is a solemn assembly, and you shall do no servile work therein. All right. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything upon his day. Mm. Besides the Shabbats of the Lord and besides your gifts and beside all your vows and beside all your free will offerings, which you give unto the Lord. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Shabbat, and that's today. And on the eighth day shall be a Shabbat. It's not moving. Okay. And you shall take you on the first day the ball. Okay, I'm sorry. There it is. The burrow of God, a goodly tree branches of palm trees, and the bough of the thick trees and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generation. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booth seven days. All that are, are, are Israelite born shall dwell in booths. So what is the Feast of Tabernacles? Since this is our first time, so we're going to do a teaching on the Feast of the Tab Tabernacle and its significance, how our ancestors celebrated rated it and how God commands, commands us to celebrate it and why. So when, when God's people came out of Egypt, they lived in tabernacles or Sukkot. And Yah told them to build a tabernacle for him also. So his glory could come down and dwell in their midst. And in Exodus 25 and 8, he, he instructs Moses and let them make a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. So the Feast of the ta of Tabernacle celebrated Yah's glory living with his people as they dwelt in tabernacles. Five tabernacles where God's glory is manifested. Number one, Tabernacle of Moses. Exodus 40, 33 through 35 describes Moses setting up the tabernacle. When he did, the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle and dwelt in the midst of his people. Because God's glory dwelt with them, they enjoyed perfect provisions. Manna came from heaven every day Hallelujah. for them to eat. Their shoes did not wear out. God met their every need. They had complete protection. Every enemy that came against them was defeated. They enjoyed total health. Not one among them was sick, weak, or infirm. God's glory brought God's blessing. And now isn't that a blessing that this is the result of, of Moses building the tabernacle? All of their needs were met. They had protection. And we need all of these. We, we really do need all of these benefits of celebrating the feast. Uh, uh, the glory filled the tabernacle. Well, we are a tabernacle. We ourselves, our bodies are a tabernacle. And God's glory dwelt with them. We want, all of us want the presence of God, the glory, his glory, to dwell with us. Mm -hmm. And manna came from heaven every day for them to eat. 
And with the, right now, we, we're facing a possible food shortage. Mm -hmm. So we might need this, this particular blessing uh, for a manna uh, that, that, God, that uh, Yahweh will feed us. Now, their shoes didn't wear out. They, didn't, they couldn't go to the mall or order online to get new shoes. So this was a blessing mm -hmm. to the people, to the children of Israel. And he met every need. They had complete protection. Every time an enemy would come against them, uh, they would defeat him, defeat that enemy. And then they enjoyed total health. Now, that's a big one. How would we like to enjoy total health? Mm. And see, this is a wonderful benefit of celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles because no one among them was sick. Mm. No one was weak. Mm. No one was infirm. God's glory brought his blessing. Mm. Yahweh's glory brought all of those blessings to the people and we we are anticipating he bring him bringing these blessings to us all right the second uh uh tabernacle is the tabernacle of david david is from the tribe of judah and so are we so we are his kinsman redeemer uh, he is our kinsman redeemer pardon me david set up a tent for the ark of the covenant surrounded it with praise 24 seven and God's glory and Yahweh's glory came down. In Psalm 63 and two, David writes of this tabernacle. I have seen you in the sanctuary mm. and beheld your power and your glory. My, my. So when he set up this tabernacle, God's blessings were poured out and Israel enjoyed incredible pros prosperity. Mm. What, a, what an awesome, awesome a benefit for celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles and incredible prosperity. We are today, we are Israel. Mm -hmm. So how about us in, uh, 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 instead of uh, God's people not having enough from week to week or month to month, uh, how about an incredible prosperity? Why don't you just put your hands on your heart and say, I, say I want in, to enjoy incredible prosperity. I want to enjoy incredible Hallelujah. prosperity. And, and then not only that, but they had victory over every enemy. Now we have some enemies out there yep. that, are, that are trying to kill us all off. Uh, it could be from a traffic stop or it could be uh, uh, from uh, some, some person that they call Karen to try to pin some kind of bogus charge on us while we're in a store or whatever. We have enemies out there, but victory over our enemies is a benefit of celebrating this feast. Hallelujah. My, my. Uh, the third tabernacle is tabernacle is Yeshua. John 1 and 14 says, and the word became flesh and tabernacle, literary translation means dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. In your Yahshua, God dwelt among his people and manifested his glory, release in life, healing, salvation, Hallelujah. and deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How would, now don't we all want that? Don't we all want healing, salvation, and deliverance? Yes, yes, yes. Ha Hallelujah. That is, that is, uh, Wonderful, and, and uh, that is a wonderful benefit of celebrating this feast. The fourth tabernacle is the eternal tabernacle. Revelations 21, three through four says, now the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men and he will live with them. So the result of this is a continual blessing. This is going to happen in the end times uh, we are, where we are at the beginning. We are at the beginning of the end times now. 
but this will be a continual blessing. And look at this, look at this, my beloved family. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. My Lord, my Lord. There will be no Lord, more death yeah. or mourning or crying or pain. And how many people, how many Israelites have lost a loved one? I know I, I, uh, I did uh, uh, at the end of December, I lost my brother. And, uh, and I could, I, my mind just focused on there's one day, there's not going to be any more crying, any more uh, uh, crying or mourning or pain. Some of you have lost loved ones. Mm. Maybe it was last year or whatever, but, uh, but the, but the, but the uh, anticipation that Yahweh is going to wipe away every tear from our eyes. And then there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. Wow, that's something exciting to me. Exciting to me. And then Isaiah 4 and 5 says that over everything, God's glory will, will be a tabernacle. Yeah. So we will have access to the eternal tabernacle. We'll have access to Yahshua as the tabernacle. And so, so this is an exciting, this is an exciting time and celebration. The fifth tabernacle is the assembly. Acts 15, 16 through 17 describes the assembly as the restoration of David's tabernacle. Yahweh intended the assembly to be the place where God's glory is enthroned on the praise of his people. When the assembly is fulfilling his call, the glory of God dwells in our midst and a great blessing is released on the earth. Yahweh intended the, assem in intended the assembly to be a place where God's glory is enthroned on the praises of his people. You know, you know, uh, we've often said that it, it is important uh, that we praise God. You know, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Uh, that's what this is saying. Uh, God's glory is enthroned on the praises of his people. So when you praise God, you know, his, his glory is released on you. And, 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 and it goes back to uh, some of the things that we just went over, the blessing, the, the, the healing, the restoration, mm. uh, 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 all those things, and uh, with no more pain, no more dying, no more mourning, and 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 not only uh, is it talking about the pain of we suffer emotionally, but we won't have any more physical pain. Mm. You know, uh, we've often talked about the warehouse up there with spare parts, and and uh, uh, some of us are. Are struggling with some things right now. I know I am with my back and 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 my knees, you know. But you know, and, and that time I it, I'm not gonna have any pain. You know, I'm gonna have new knees or ha have a, a new back, and 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 you know, it, it's it's just amazing. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. So uh, the tabernacles were and are where God's glory, Yahweh's glory is manifested. And all five of these tabernacles have this in common. A, at the tabernacle, Yahweh's presence, his glory dwelt among men. And then from the, from the place of God's presence, then God's life, Yahweh's life and blessings were released to his people. That is that that is the big benefit of celebrating and keeping the feast of tabernacles. So that's what the feast of tabernacles <laughs> celebrate. So so we're just getting a glimpse of the depth of 
of what this Feast of Tabernacle means. Abba Yahweh never tells us to do something in vain. He always has an intended, intended purpose. He always has blessings for us whenever we are obedient. So this is, uh, this is really awesome that we are come together to uh, in this co holy convocation uh, to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. I love this. This is one of my favorites. That is glory and his presence are released upon us. That is, that is awesome. That is awesome to me. Experiencing his glory. To understand tabernacle, we need to understand God's glory. Glory is talked about in the scripture but many are not sure what it is. What do we mean when we talk about glory? Glory is the tangible manifestation of God's presence. God is always present everywhere, but there are certain times when he reveals his presence in a way that is known Hallelujah. to our five senses. Yes. Yes. In other words, we can either see him or we can experience him, feel him yes. or whatever. Uh, and that is that is what I'm looking forward to doing this feast. Hallelujah. So in Moses tabernacle, God's glory was manifested as a shining cloud, as a shining cloud. And I and I honestly have seen this manifestation. They call it the uh, in, in our English term, Shekinah, but it's Shekinah glory. The, it's, it, you can actually see it. It looks like a mist or fog. And we have, we have experienced it. Mm -hmm. We have experienced, some of you may have experienced it. Yeah, and at Mount Sinai, it was revealed in thunder and wow. fire. Sometimes his presence was evidently, uh, was evident through miracles and acts of power. And uh, there's not one of us that, he, that are listening uh, that have not needed and welcome miracles and the acts of power of God, of Yahweh, because it all, he always uh, blesses us and he always helps us and builds us up. So we need that. We need that. Elijah sensed God's presence in a gentle whisper. Some of you may have sensed that too. I know I have in times when I was in my most uh, uh, deepest distress or deepest uh, 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 need of him acting on my behalf. I've heard that gentle whisper and I pray that you hear it too. Some of you may have already heard it. But there are many ways that Yahweh can manifest his presence. Hallelujah. Experiences his glory. I knew God was speaking to me. I felt I was surrounded by his love. The room was filled with a strange light. I had a strange sensation. Mm -hmm. I felt heat all over my body. My hands were tingling. I don't know what it was. I sense God in a way I can't explain. Uh, um, you know, there are times that I know uh, that God is speaking to me, uh, uh, especially in times of sermon preparation. And, you know, I, 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 I be thinking one way, then all of a sudden, God uh, 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 in his still quiet voice, uh, tells me, no, we, we, I want you to go another way. And, 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 and Lord knows there are times I've felt his love surround me, you know, and, and I've had strange sensations, you know, and, and, and I felt heat all over my body, you know, my hands were tingling, you know, and, um, uh, you know, I feel it, uh, quite often. But the, the times that I usually feel it the most is what I'm preaching. And that's why I guess I, you know, I, I get so excited when I'm preaching. You know, I, I, I just feel his glory. I just, you know, you know, and, and just feel him surrounding me and feeling the Holy Spirit just, just lifting me up. 
Hallelujah. 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 And then uh, some of you uh, may have thought or experienced, I didn't see anything, but he was there mm. face to face. Or I didn't understand what was happening. And I have, I have often experienced this third bullet. I couldn't stop weeping. Tears were rolling down my cheeks and Yahweh was there with me. Anytime we sense God's presence in a tangible way, what you are experiencing, my beloved, is the glory of Yahweh is the glory. You probably can identify with some of these ways. You can identify with some of these ways. And uh, I've, I've, I have often uh, been just on the keyboard, just playing. And then I could feel the glory being poured out over me. And then it, it causes tears and weeping. I think, I, I, think, I think we can safely say that most people have experienced this in some kind of way. Mm -hmm. So this is wonderful. And we just pray that you will uh, continue to experience his glory during this time of celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. experience in his glory. The Feast of Tabernacle is a celebration of God's glory. It is a time to remember past experience of his glory. It is a time to seek his face and experience his glory now. It is a time to call out to God for a fresh outpouring of his glory uh, in the new year. One week, a year, God asked his people to tabernacle with him. Yeah, go ahead. No, I'm just going to say it, 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 this is a time to remember past experiences of his glory, um, past experiences, experiences of his, uh, his blessing. And, and, and uh, that's one of the things that uh, we celebrate uh, uh, during this time. Not only uh, uh, is it a celebration uh, of the tents and the booth and all, but it's also a celebration, a deep celebration of how God delivered the children of Israel out of bondage. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's a celebration for us. And uh, well, not only delivered them out of bondage, but for those 40 years, we just read it, you know, he, he fed them, the man. And as the clothes didn't even wear out. Shoes and clothes didn't wear out. Other words, God provided for them. God took care of them. And so this, this, is, this is another uh, uh, meaning of uh, 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 on experience of the Feast of Tabernacle, realizing, you know, the past experience, what God has done for you, how God brought you, how God kept you, and, and, and he's still blessing you, and he's still keeping you right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And he, he asked us to tabernacle with him once one week out of the year. Now, we realize that this is our first time celebrating, and, uh, and uh, it, would take, it would be a challenge to take a week out of the year, but this is what, uh, but we, we can, we may have to go to work, but we can spend some time each day of this week uh, tabernacling with him and seeking his face and experiencing his glory. Mm -hmm. So this is what he is calling for us for us to do, you, you, and, and, uh, you and I and everyone else. God promised a special blessing for those who would do this. Tabernacles is a time to enjoy the Lord. It is a time to celebrate Yahweh's goodness. In Leviticus 23 and 40, it tells us rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. So it's not that like the day of atonement, which was a day of mourning. It was 24 hours of mourning and fasting for our sins. But this is, this is a whole week. 
of, of rejoicing. So, so make sure you don't allow anybody or anything to take away your joy this seven days because this, 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 uh, this rejoicing pleases our, our Father, Father Yahweh. Rejoice before the Lord our God for seven days. And Deuteronomy 16, 14 through 15 says, be joyful at your feast. For the, for the Lord your God will bless you and your joy will be complete. How many of us need complete joy? Hallelujah. I know I can raise both hands. We all need complete joy. So, we, so in other words, this is something that we can control from these scriptures because we can, uh, uh, we can tell ourselves to rejoice before the Lord our God. Mm -hmm. Then we can tell ourselves to be joyful during this feast for the Lord our God and uh, for he will bless you and your joy will be complete. I love it. I love that because when we intentionally are joyful for seven days, beginning at six, uh, six o'clock this evening. And so we will, we will uh, be joyful for the next seven days so just just try just make an effort to be joyful smile sometimes if you just smile then the rest of you will just cooperate along with it will come along you know if you just smile so why don't you wherever you are just give a smile now uh and just be thankful when you think about all the goodness of your heavenly father then you should smile because that is but he because he is so so good he is so, so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, and this is a picture. This is a graphic of our ancestors, our forefathers. Now, this is the tabernacle down. If I don't know if you can see my pointer, but this is a tabernacle right there in the middle. And each of the 12 tribes were lined up and surrounded the tabernacle or the Sukkot. And so this is how they first celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. And it says that, that your generation may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh, your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel, the feast of the Lord. They are not our feast and, uh, and, and they are not uh, uh, they are not Jewish feast or Israelite feast. They are the feast of the Lord. It's his idea. It's his command that we celebrate the feast. Hallelujah. What did Yeshua say doing Sukkot in the last days, that great day of feast of Sukkot, he stood and cried saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. John 7, 17. Hallelujah. There's another. Okay, now let's see it. Yeah. Can't see it. It's okay. I'll just read it. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I, that I, oops, I didn't mean to turn it, excuse me, that, that I give shall, that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. So, so honey, this is, this is a proof that Yeshua celebrated the feast. Yeah. Yeah. of tabernacles yeah. and and you know we, we we often talk about this that people who are thirsty they do things uh against uh god's will in order to satisfy that thirst that will only be satisfied with the water the living water that yeshua that yeshua gives mm -hmm. During Sukkot, the Messiah, the Mashiach said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me 
and drink. Can you imagine all the crowds that were come to Jerusalem to, to celebrate the feast? And, uh, and uh, he said, if anybody is thirsty, come to me and drink. And that's what we do. We come to him when, when, when we are just in need of fellowship mm -hmm. and his presence mm -hmm. and his, uh, the assurance of his love. And he is really talking about Holy Spirit. He is really talking, the, the Hebrew name is Ruach HaKodesh. And he's talking about, because without the Holy Spirit, we're going to thirst and we're going to do things that are against whatever he wants for us. Mm. So he says, if anyone thirsts, let them come to me and drink. He is, he is so ready, so willing to pour the Holy Spirit out upon all of his beloved children. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. During Sukkot, the Messiah said, go up to the festival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And during Sukkot, the Messiah said, my teaching is from the one who sent me. Now, and later on in, my, in our studies, we're going to talk about that because there's a lot of misunderstanding about uh about the new testament and the, the teachings of paul but uh yeshua said my teaching is from the one who sent me well who sent him the father sent him and so uh the father uh, wrote the old testament and that is who sent yeshua so that uh, 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 unlike uh, some, so many believe that some things have changed, they haven't. Our Yahweh God is did not change things. He did not change things because Yeshua uh, died on the uh, died on that tree and shed his blood. Nothing changed. He says, "I am, I am God. I am everlasting, and I do not change." Mm. So he is the immutable, which is a word for change. He is a, the immutable God that does not mm. change. Hallelujah! 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 Sukkot, Jesus' tabernacle among men, water of life, light of the world. John 20, 20, 24. 24. <laughs> I think it's something like that. Yeah, I just found this graphic uh, on Pinterest and uh, I decided to put it, put it in here because he is, uh, uh, Yahshua is the water of life and, and of yeah, and the light of the world. And he also is the bread of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we thank you for sharing this mm -hmm. feast, the opening of this feast mm -hmm. with us. And uh, so now we are a little more understanding, knowledgeable, and, and we understand more about the fall feast and uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. So now you know why Father Yahweh wanted us to come together for this appointed time. Now, uh, maybe next year, if, uh, if Yah's will, if it's Yah's will, we'll have the, uh, the branches and the willows and so forth. And we will, uh, and then we will do it in a, a more, uh, a deeper, yeah, formal way. But uh, you know what? I, I'm just so, I'm just so thankful, and and I thank Abba Yah that that His people are coming to the awakening of who we are, because these feasts are just practice. Because when Yeshua returns to the earth, to the new Jerusalem, and he gathers us up, then we're going to actually celebrate the feast. These feasts that we have done for this entire year are practices. 
They are, we are practicing for the real thing when Yeshua brings us from the four corners of the earth and he gathers up the other tribes of Israel. But Judah is the one that's scattered to the four corners of the earth and he gathers up he gathers up the um, uh, the tribe, uh, other tri tribes of Israel, and he returns us back to um, to uh, the land that he promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. So, so this is practice. We appreciate you. We love you, and Yahweh loves you. And uh, and then I'm going to ask uh, my my husband to to uh, give us the closing prayer and uh, then we will speak the blessing upon you and we just hope that you will have a joyful, joyful week celebrating the Feast of Tabernacle. Precious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, your son, we, 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 we come this evening and we're thankful for yes. this time of fellowship. We're thankful for this time of teaching, oh God. And we're thankful, oh God, that your glory is among us, yes. is with yes. us, oh God. And we're thankful for all of your provisions, your healings, and all yes. that you've done for us, Lord. And we ask your continued blessing upon your people. Strengthen us, oh God. Keep us in your care and keep us in your love. Yes. And as yes. always, we pray that no evil will come upon us or plague or calamity or covid will come now our dwelling. Yes. Give your angels charge over yes. us to protect us in all of our way. And Father, you, thou art a good, good Father. Yes, And are. we are loved by yes, you. Yes, yes. Thank you, Thank Lord. You. We love you. Thank you. And now we're going to just speak the parting blessing over you. Yahweh, may Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you and lift up his countenance upon you because he loves you and you are his beloved and grant you his shalom. Uh -huh. Go in the shalom of Yahweh, my beloved family, and we will see you at the end of Sukkot. Uh, and I believe it's going to be either Sunday night or Monday, I have to check for seven days. It'll be seven days of joying and celebration and feasting. One thing that you are allowed to do is to eat your favorite foods during this week. But don't go over, don't go overboard, but eat your favorite foods. We love you and we are.